Hey there, Internet. I'm Kyle. Apparently, I'm back playing Final Fantasy Pixel Remaster. Uh, on our last episode, we got our third crystal unlocked, defeated our third fiend, and now um, I've kind of gone on like a little shopping trip. I got us uh, super duper up on ethers and potions, which are the big ones. Um, also, I went ahead and mostly filled out... Um, I didn't even realize we were this close. Uh, filled out... James and Matt's spell books. Uh, we are pretty much broke now. Uh, so we'll have to come back for a spell here. We are actually currently in Gaia. Um, but we're about to head off to the next leg of our journey. In our sick airship. Alright. So. What we're going to do first. Is head on down south. Down to that poopy town we all love. Melmond. What's in Melmond, you ask? Well, remember how we picked up that Rosetta Stone from the uh, mermaids? Well, it just so happens that there is someone in this burg who can help us out with that. Let's see, where are they? Right here. Notice the NPC is slightly different than any other NPC you've seen. Oon. Oh, that's cool. Actually, uh, I never picked up on that. Um, I don't think they were named in the original, but Oon is a recurring character from 3 as well. Just a moment. Let me see that tablet. Uh, but Oon was a woman in 3. This, this is the Rosetta Stone. This makes it possible to decipher Lufinian. Hmm. Yes, of course. That's what that was. It all makes sense. Here, allow me to express my gratitude by teaching you Lufinian. So go on your mobile phone and download this app with an annoying green owl. Now use it for a year straight and still not be able to speak it very well. There, now you can speak Lufinian too. I'm just goofing. I just did. I've tried those once or twice and I can never stick with it. I know a lot of people who have actually learned quite a bit from those. Uh, my girlfriend actually... Uh, I think at one point she was like one of the top people in the world score wise they, they have a score right she was on some leaderboard for um actually the i forget if it was gaelic or ancient irish i know she's doing japanese right now too um so now we know that let's see normally there's a pretty good spot to crash over here it's not you hmm it's gotta be this then i guess all right, so now we're going to head to the final town in the game, actually, and it's all the way down here, and it's not a convenient place to go. Oh, and I don't have any money. Well, hopefully I have enough crap to sell. We'll kill some stuff on the way there, too. So I do know they have at least two things I want to buy there, and I'm sure they're going to be expensive. Step, step. Get him, boys. I wish it was that easy to learn a language. Yeah, if you could, like, flick a switch in your brain and instantly know a language, what would it be? For me, it's easily Japanese, just so I can play more obscure Japanese RPGs. There's also some other practical uses for that, but that's the big one. There's actually quite a few... Um, Japanese only tabletop RPGs I would love to be able to translate. Uh, one in particular is actually a um, official Mobile Suit Gundam one from like the uh, late 80s, early 90s. I've always wanted to play, but there's not a good translation of it anywhere. Any hoozle. Welcome to Lufinia. We are the Lufinians, the descendants of the race that once lived among the clouds, the sky people. You use a vessel called an airship? It was built by one of our ancestors, a man by the name of Sid. Sick tie-in. There is a Sid in this game. We have a legend that has been passed down through many generations. According to this legend, 400 years after the fall of the civilization in the sky, warriors bearing light will come forth to save our people. Sadi. Alright, um, so real quick. I'm not going to get this out of the way. Or get more lore dump. Secret magic shop. Uh, sells some of the best spells in the game. Oh, and they are expensive, and I can't sell things here, can I? 
because you guys are dorks, and I don't have 80,000 gold. Okay, so we'll be coming back. Alright. We came to believe that there was another entity controlling the four fiends. To ascertain its location, we sent out five warriors, but much time has passed since we heard from them. I hope no harm has befallen them. Um, team up blocks the power of wind, the source of the peop sky people's strength. We place our last hope in the five warriors we sent out. It's been said they fell victim to the curse of the fiends and were turned into bats. Before you leave, legendary warriors, take this chime with you. It will grant you passage into the Mirage Tower. Chime obtain. Sick. Like a doorbell. Um, other than that, this area, there's really nothing going on here. <laughs> uh, there's more lore for you. If you're playing through and you want to go through all of it, um, I've heard it all before. I know it's not the nicest thing to do on a playthrough, but also we kind of want to move forward. Um, but we will definitely be coming back with 80,000. Uh, probably just come after... Oh, look at these goofy... Goofy goofums. Um, I'll probably come back after the Mirage Tower. Just to get those. Let's see here. This will be cool capstones, I guess. We get those going into the final dungeon, essentially. We'll have a little... After the uh, Mirage Tower, we'll have like a little wrap-up episode, essentially, where we go around and just type any loose ends we have left. There'll be a... Not really side quests, but more just like a shopping list. An errand list to run. And we'll make sure we get those spells as well. Probably just end up doing it as like a quick montage. Just to, you know, kind of show you guys where the things are at. I don't want to take an entire episode of me just flying around. All right. Now that we got that, ooh, the Mirage Tower. All right, um, I think this is the closest I can get. I'll, oh, no, there's space here. Sick. All right. Let us enter. Ooh. Ah, this music was always, like, some of my least favorite, honestly, in the game. It just kind of gets annoying. Oh, but there's all kinds of crap here. Ooh, okay. Um, let's see here. <clears throat> Ow! <laughs> oh, you guys poisoned too? Big annoying. All right, and with that fire up. Dang, dudes. Alright. Oh, right. <clears throat> Probably should have grabbed more of those, huh? That's alright. Uh, there's another robot. Eh. That's right. Flee in terror. Where, tigers? Alright. Fire it up. Light it up. <clears throat> Alright, let's see. Money. I do need money right now. Healing Helm. Oh, I also need to get spells for myself and chat at some point, right? Um, Let's see here. Healing Helm. Can you equip the Healing Helm? You can. Chad's just going to get all the sick magic items. Vorpal Sword, is that better than my current sword? It is not. Let me go to that, though. Since it's unequipped and I can't see the effect. Uh, where are you at, Vorpal Sword? What do you do? Oh, nothing. You're just very sharp. I don't think that's better than the Ice Brand, is it? It is not. I don't know what the point of that sword is. 
besides being a Vorpal Sword, which is sick. <clears throat> yeah, I've actually only ever in a actual D&D campaign attained a Vorpal weapon once. And it was in like the longest running uh, campaign I ever played in. And it was one of the best gaming experiences of my life. Because it's not even that it was good. Oh, that's good though. It's just that it's one of those like kind of iconic um, items, you know. And I swear, I never crit. Like I have the joke about my dice luck. Uh, I'll give that to myself. Actually, yeah. A uh, running joke at my table is I just don't roll well. Terrible dice luck. But I swear to God, the first big boss fight we got into after I got that nat 20 <laughs> for like the first time in months. And I didn't even feel bad when the DM was like, man, can we not do that? Because <laughs> so I, I understand the pain of planning an incredible encounter and then having one 20 just ruin it. It would have ruined everyone else's fun, too. As fun as it would have been for me. I understood where he's coming from. I'd be bummed out, too. But also, I didn't make him put a Vorpal Sword in this game. And it was funny, because he put it in there, and he made it what he thought was unattainable, until he realized absolutely how broken our characters were. <laughs> it was like in a case, in a heavily guarded mansion full of vampires, and other spellcasters. Master, we have waited so long. Uh, let's see here. Okay, you guys don't do anything, you just look cool. Let me see, um... Oh, I just gotta go all the way down. Okay. Um... But yeah, there were just, like... Basically, we had to, like, infiltrate a party full of vampires in order to kill this specific vampire countess, but if, you know, we got caught, it was, like, Hitman style, where we'd be in big trouble trying to get out of there, because everyone there was, like, at least a 10th level spellcaster. Um, but we ended up accomplishing that mission while we were there. We saw the sword in the case, and it's like, oh, we can't possibly break that out right now. We draw so much attention. But then once we had murdered her, and we didn't care because we were just fleeing, we started running away, and, like, the entire party of people started chasing after us. And that's when the ingenious bard and myself figured, huh, no one's guarding that sword right now. So we uh, went invisible, got on some phantom steeds, flew back, uh, and of course no one was there. And the DM, like, he had actually planned this, he showed me the sheet. Um, there was an instant irreversible death effect, basically like, your character dies, retire that sheet, they don't get to come back, type death effect. Homebrewed. On that case, uh, I think it was a... I don't know how many of you are big D&D &D people, or this is more specifically was Pathfinder. Um, but it had a fortitude saving throw, which is based on your constitution, how hardy you are. And it was like, I think a 35 or a 40, which is like ungodly high. And basically between myself and the bard, we were able to cast so many spells on my character who already had a good constitution that I think I ended up having like a plus like 29 or something to that save. We just had to find all these spells we already had that stacked. It was insane. So basically I had a, what would that have been? A roughly 25 to 30% chance on that dice roll of just dying and losing this character I'd been using for years. Worth it. <laughs> I made the save, we got the sword, flew out, no one caught us. It's pretty good stuff. So yeah, sorry, that was kind of a long-winded thing. I'm not paying attention to the game. I am. But once in a while I like to talk about other things. Got some robots. This was like the first time really that uh, outside of the one you encounter in the water waterfall cave, this is like the first time you really uh, 
would see kind of sci-fi elements in a Final Fantasy game. Let's see here. Use that light axe. Get him. Brutalized him. Alright, let's see here. So I just need to kind of go around the whole thing, huh? Like a cinnamon roll of death. Owie. Get him. Yeah, we've kind of reached that point where we're just an efficient engine of death. I'm into it. Let's just keep leveling, boys. Are we at 34 now? 35! I'm at 36. Alright. It's been a pretty grindy episode thus far. Ooh, that attack does look cool. Am I the only one that sees, like, giant honking boobs on those things? That is me. Big robo boobs. I don't even know what my mind is doing anymore. Should I have gone down there? Yeah. Hellhounds. Those look more like hell kitties. Ow. Got him. Yeah, I gotta look in here, right? Oh, yeah, that's a lot of stuff. Ambushed. Ooh, blaze it. Alright. Not even, like, trying anymore. Hmm, probably should, though. I say is I just mash A again. Ah, uh, good job, team. Alright, let's get some potions, because I'm almost certain these are going to have some baddies in them. Alright. Monies. Monies. Thor's hammer. Oh, baby. Alright, so real quick, I want to look at it in here, just because... As Thundara. Okay, so that's cool, too. Um, I'm going to see if they wrote one of the biggest wrongs. Hey, yep, and they're allowing James to actually equip that. Oh, here you go, buddy. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, I'm pretty sure that's, like, the best weapon James can get to. So he just got his ultimate weapon. Cottage. Sunblade. Ooh, that's really good. Once again, I'm going to do this, though, before I equipped it. Ah, it's just effective against the undead. Okay. Um. So, hmm. I'm going to say just because Chad can't equip the defender, I don't think. Let me see. Oh, Chad can equip the defender. There we go. I'm doing that. More of a Ali Dan. Ooh, Dragon Mail. Oh, uh, you can't equip that? Alright. Let's see. Eh, that's fine. Alright, and then if I go down here. Eh, it's the same distance. Okay. Alright, let's see this new sword. Stoked. Come on. Ooh, that's cool looking. 
Oh, that's even cooler looking. Oh, I forgot James had a new hammer too. I got so caught up on my sunblade. Now we can do that, which is mad convenient. Whoop. Oh, baby. Alright, so let's go up here. Oh, another robot. Our friend left on a journey to the west. Literary joke. I love it. Never change. Alright, I know we are running a little over right now, but I do want to try and get just a teensy bit further. So bear with me. Also, once again, just mega stoked on James getting that Thor hammer. I know it doesn't do much physical damage, because he's not made for that, but it's just awesome. also much more convenient than this. Oh, baby. Get blocked. That's right. I'm immune to getting stoned. <laughs> I couldn't even tell who fled. I think it was the mummy. Two golden needles. Nice. Alright, here we go. Let's see what's... A blue dragon. Alright, you're a boss, so I'm going to pretend you are scary. Yeah, let's go ahead and... Actually, I'm going to check something. That's cool. I didn't even realize that my sword I've been carrying for a while actually had a spell on it. I'm an idiot. Um... I don't know. I don't think we've seen Blizzaga yet, right? Oh, wait, you're blue. That would indicate... Oh, never mind. Eek. Maybe Thunder was not a good choice here. Yes, it clearly was not. But maybe Blizzaga was! Oh, it was. <laughs> I've gone a little overboard on that. Use the warp cube to travel beyond the sky. It will take you to the flying fortress. Remember how we got that warp cube? It's for this. And we're going to step into that box on the next episode. Thank you guys so very much for watching. I'm Kyle, apparently, and I will see you next time. Spend the next 12 hours in this house, I'll give you each $10,000. Or your next opinion in case you don't survive.